Hey everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. So for today's video, I just wanna do a quick little updates video on some of the plants that I've shown you recently and just talk about some of the things that are going on in my plant collection. So let's get into it. Really big plant. Okay, so behind me, <laughs> I've got my three ficus triangularis, the triangulari, I've been calling them. So, I've got the two alive ones, and then I have the one dead one. Okay, <laughs> this one just never really recovered. Um, I was hoping for some kind of miracle. I thought that maybe it would come back, but the branches just continued to get more and more and more shriveled up. So I haven't even done anything with this. It's just sitting here. I've been watering it and hoping that It'll come back. We'll prune this back because I think that that could actually help encourage some growth. I probably should have done that like a really long time ago when the leaves first started dying. Okay, wait, first let me tell you about this setup. So <laughs> this setup, but actually just where I put these plants on the floor over here where they can get some light. So I've got the three triangulari over here. Um, the little dead one lives right here and this is just where I've been keeping them and I haven't moved them. I have this setup with dual humidifiers because I have one that I'm able to set on a timer and the other one needs to be manually returned on every time it runs out of water, which is kind of annoying. So um, I traveled twice since I bought these plants and left them alone for two one week long intervals and set up this humidifier here. So I have it set on this timer here, which I unplugged from the wall currently because it's um, kind of loud. I have these in my Amazon store. I bought like a four pack of these years ago and they also work. So I've never bought replacement timers, but they make a very loud, um, just like a vibrating mechanical sound. Anyway, I have this timer set so that it runs um, for half an hour every, let's see, one, two, three, for every, every three hours, the humidifier turns on for half an hour and runs. So that's the setup. And with the size of the tank, it allows the humidifier to run for about a week with just one fill of water. I really prefer this other humidifier that's in the front here that you can see making humidity right now because it's just like a lot easier to fill. Turn that off for a second. So yeah, I basically have like a humidity stream going on these triangulari most of the time. Um, I don't always remember to fill the one in the front, but I do try to keep that one running. So there's like a humidifier going around these plants 24 seven now. My plan was to ultimately like wean the plants off of the humidifier by switching to that one that only comes on every three hours and then eventually maybe get rid of it or just keep going with that system. So these, I've got them on a totally strict watering schedule. I water them once a week um, and I sometimes remember to take them to the sink and sometimes I just dump water into the pot and they've been doing great. And then I went away on a trip and I took accidentally like 10 days to get around to watering them. I forgot to water them for a few days after I got back. It just slipped my mind that I missed their watering day and they did drop some leaves. Let me see. And so, yeah, now that I missed one watering, I know that I should not do that anymore because some of the leaves have started to drop. This one sits in like the direct stream of the humidifier and it hasn't really lost any leaves since the first like couple weeks when I brought it home. Let me turn it around. I have it faced the other way because the windows are back there. So I just like let it face that way. Um, I'll turn this one too. Oh, wow, that looks so much better. All right, smile, plants are on camera. <laughs> okay, so this is definitely their photogenic angle. This is the way that faces the windows. I realized that I missed the watering because I noticed the trees starting to look a little bit limp. Um, or I noticed that tree starting to look a little bit limp and it did end up dropping like a whole bunch of leaves. Only a couple of those are from this tree. So I do think that being in the direct stream of the humidifier definitely affects the plant. I mean, duh, right? Um, but this plant likes it and it makes it a little bit more resilient. But yeah, both of these are, I don't wanna say they're doing really well because I don't wanna like jinx myself, but they haven't died off yet. And it's been like almost two months. So I feel like that's really good. And I'm just really happy to have these and hopefully if they grow some new leaves soon, I can start to feel confident enough to maybe start rotating them. I don't know. I'm scared of rotating them. I'm gonna put it back exactly how it used to be. Okay, 
and then let's do something about this one. So, um, I know this plant is probably a goner, but let's prune it anyway and hope that maybe, maybe a miracle will happen. You never know. Okay. <laughs> um, so these are done for and the stem, the, the main stem is starting to shrivel up top. There's areas where it looks kind of like I don't know, like it looks extra dead, like the color is very dark. As you move down the stem a little bit, you can see that the branch in this area, the main stem in this area is a lighter color. So I'm gonna just prune off these branches until I get to some living part of the plant. Or we're gonna see if maybe it's just totally dead on the inside. Plant, are you dead inside? Uh-oh. Okay. I don't think there's anything left alive on this. <laughs> All right, who knows how long ago this happened. This probably died off like right after I first brought this home. Weeks ago, after I fried it in my car um, in the super heat. But do you see how the main stem here has like a dark spot in the center? Anyway, it's hollow, which means that it's it's dead. All right. Well, at least I can stop watering this one now, and I big time learned my lesson about putting special plants in the hot car. Okay, I secretly really, really believed, slash I guess not so secretly, really believed that this plant would make a miraculous comeback if I just had enough faith and hope and goodwill towards it, but <laughs> that didn't really work as planned. I should not have fried it in my car. Probably we'll just put this in the compost. Womp womp. Okay, and then I wanna show you just a couple little updates. Look, yay, can you see this? My strawberry begonia that I bought from Armstrong is already growing some little babies. It's got a little baby over here. So that's very, very exciting. Hooray. And then the heart fern, it's still alive <laughs> somehow miraculously. Um, I have to water it like every other day, pretty much. Um, it's moist right now, but I went on a trip. I was gone for about a week and I left it in this bowl full of water filled about halfway up with water. Um, maybe more than halfway and it was kind of a toss of the dice because I didn't know if it was gonna just instantly drown the plant um, but when I got back one week later the plant was looking healthy and all of the water was gone and it was even a little bit dry so I watered it and then like two days later it shriveled up which is crazy because I had left for a week and it had been fine but maybe it wanted so much water so I've just been keeping it in this bowl and when I water it now I just give it so much water and I let it sit in the standing water and every time I've come back to check on it later in the day all of the water has been gone um I don't know where all the water is going because it doesn't really make sense to me that the fern is drinking this much water, but I guess it is. So <laughs> it's still alive somehow. Some of the leaves inside did crisp up a little bit, but it's overall doing okay. It looks like a little bit sad. Maybe it needs a little more water. It feels really moist. Do you, I don't know if you can see the fungus gnats cloud that is like swirling around this plant. <laughs> I should treat it with some mosquito bits. And this little peperomia um, is doing pretty well. I think I really, really need to put it into a bigger pot. It's in a tiny pot. I watered it yesterday and like let it soak in water. And then this morning I came down to look at it and it was still really droopy. I don't know if you can tell if you're familiar with peperomias, you can kind of tell that this plant is thirsty right now. The leaves are swinging a little bit more freely than I would like to see. Yeah, somebody said that they thought this plant might have thrips um, and I appreciate that so much. I stared at this plant for like an hour trying to see if there were any thrips on it and I do think that it is thrip free. Um, I still have this leaf on it though that has the suspicious marks. I think this could have been just like physical damage but I'm still gonna just cut those leaves off right now. Boom. Um, I think the other one's okay. I was gonna cut this one off too but this really looks like physical damage to me from when the plant was transported. This looks like it could have been a little bit of something weird, so 
I should have cut this off sooner, but anyway. And this plant is flowering. It's got the little flowers on the top just starting to poke out. The Peperomia polybotria, this plant doesn't really produce um, like traditionally attractive flowers. It just makes this little like rat tail inflorescence type things um, that just look like these like little sticks. So they're very weird. Yeah, there's the little Peperomia. I need to repot it. <gasps> oh my gosh. This, I swear, this was not growing earlier this morning. This happened so fast. I was looking at this plant this morning because I knew I was gonna talk about it. <laughs> Plants are so cool. It's like, oh, you're gonna feature me? I'm gonna grow a thing. Look it, it's growing. This, this stolen has a tiny, tiny little plant sprout on it. It's got a tiny plant growing, yay! <laughs> so exciting. This plant, Saxifraga stolonifera, grows via stolons. So in its name, it's a saxifraga that makes stolons. Uh, stolonifera literally means produces stolons. Stolons are a type of plant runner that spreads from the plant and allows the plant to grow a new plant somewhere kind of far away from the original. This is already growing a little new guy over here. I'm so excited. Okay, and then I wanna to talk to you guys about the spider mite situation, just really briefly. I'm not gonna to spend too long talking about it, but I do think that I have found what seems to be the most effective solution yet, and it's like the least toxic thing of all, um, and maybe the most obvious solution, and maybe something I should have been doing all along. Misting. So I've just been misting my plants. Um, I've, been, I've been trying to treat this triangularis back here. I adore my big triangularis. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you've seen this plant in a lot better state and you know that I really like it and I've been feeling very sad that it looks this way. And the spider mites have gotten so bad on it, even with washing it off, that sometimes it was looking to me like, like you know, like in movies sometimes when they use like a stick covered in spider webs as a torch? <laughs> this plant was looking like that, like like a cotton candy, ball around the ends of the branches and so I was washing it and I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna fight this if this continues to just pop back up so I found a new solution and that is misting my plants all the time so there are a lot of reasons why people recommend misting your plants and one of the main reasons is to increase the humidity and I have always been kind of like the Grinch of misting for humidity because I don't really think that it works. Um, and actually it's not really like my opinion. It's, it's misting your plants and spraying water on their leaves is not the same as raising the level of moisture that's available in the air. It's just, there's just no way to say that those are the same thing. And so I've always thought that misting was kind of like pointless, but now I'm using misting for a different reason. That is for pest prevention and treatment. So I've been spraying my plants down with a little bit of alcohol water mist on a daily basis over here in the areas where the infestation is the worst and I think it's really helping. So I have this mister that is like a like a makeup mister. I think that's how they advertise these ones that spray a really fine spray. It's like the closest to humidity I can find in a mister. I mean you can see how fine it is. It doesn't create droplets unless you like spray a lot of times and I just leave the mister out on the counter and every time I walk by I pick it up and I spray the plants with a little bit of water. Sometimes I do an alcohol water solution but a lot of times I just refill this bottle with water and walk around and lightly mist all of my plants especially the ones that I know are being affected by spider mites and it has been working wonders. Um, I'm so happy that I decided to try just plain old misting with water because it seems to be really, really keeping the populations at bay. I kind of was thinking about the problem wrong. I was thinking about the spider mites and trying to figure out how I could get rid of them, how I could stop them from coming back, how I can eliminate them once and for all, which is the kind of thought process that led me to try to apply pesticides to my plants, which I'm sure also has been helping the fact that I have residual pesticides that I sprayed on them to counter the spider mites many weeks ago. And then in addition, I have started spraying my plants with water and I've noticed that it takes much, much longer for the webs to come back. Like in my mind, if I was gonna wash the plant, I needed to fully wash it, but just applying moisture to the plant regularly helps create an environment that is very hostile to spider mites. Spider mites hate moisture. It's okay for my house too. So the way I've been mixing the alcohol into my spray bottle, I use a ratio of roughly one quarter of the solution is alcohol. So I'll do like 
three to four parts water to one part alcohol. So I'll fill the bottle about like what I estimate to be about a quarter of the way high with alcohol and then fill the rest of it with water. Um, you can use higher concentrations of alcohol than that. It really, really depends on the individual plant and how it responds to the alcohol. So you might wanna test different concentrations on leaves if you're interested in trying to find the maximum amount of alcohol you can use. Keep in mind that alcohol is a drying agent, it isn't good for the plant leaves. Some plants are gonna be much more resilient and able to handle the stress of alcohol being sprayed on them than other plants. Some plants with more fragile leaves might be more affected by alcohol than others. Um, so start with a patch test on your plants if you are concerned. Um, the one thing I wouldn't do is don't do just like a tiny bit of alcohol with a huge amount of water because that's not gonna really be effective. It's just sort of psychological. I recommend making sure that your solution is at least like 20% alcohol. Take your bottle and your alcohol. This is gonna go really slowly because I have this really small hole in the alcohol bottles. Since alcohol evaporates so quickly, what I do when I buy these bottles is instead of peeling off this seal, I just cut a slit, like a really small slit with a knife um, so that it doesn't create too much of an opening for the alcohol to evaporate. Because otherwise I found that these bottles tend to kind of just like disappear on their own without using them if you don't seal them back up pretty tight. That's pretty full. This is actually maybe more than I normally put in here. It can be deceptive with these bottles with a bag because you can't really measure well, but I just, I'm just eyeballing it. Et voila. So yeah, I take my alcohol bottle and I just lightly spray the whole plant down. I can't tell if I've been having negative effects on the leaves. Like I've been having some yellow leaves. Sometimes right after I spray, I notice that the plant looks like a little bit shriveled. And at this point, like these same old leaves on the plants are probably kind of tired of being sprayed with alcohol. I wanna show you these pepper plants that I grew from seed. Oh my gosh, I'm about to throw them away. I knew that they started to have a little bit of a spider mite infestation and I just ignored it. And then I got back from my trip and they are just destroyed by spider mites. So I think I'm probably gonna, uh, I might just put them outside or something like that. I need to pot them up into something bigger if I'm gonna move them outdoors, but I wanna show you the spider mites on them. Look at how bad this spider mite situation is on these peppers. Like, it is so horrifying. And I grew these from seed and they've been living in this location like their whole life and they've never been in contact with any other plant. So the spider mites come from the environment. I never even had these touching the window or anything like that. They're just completely covered in spider mites from being in my house. So, and maybe I spread them when I vacuum, um, which is a concept that I became aware of since someone commented that my Roomba, my robot vacuum might be spreading spider mites around. And while I don't really use my robot vacuum too much, my regular vacuum could be doing that too. So I don't really know what to do to prevent that. So I was trying to figure out how I'm going to live. <laughs> like this spider mite situation has really, really put a damper on my planty joy if you will, <laughs> because it's been really overwhelming to try to think about how to care for all of my plants. And when I think about what it would take to actually combat a spider mite infestation, like the one in my house, I'm gonna have to like wash every plant every day or at least a couple times a week and it just doesn't really feel feasible. It's not feasible for me. I've just been really, really struggling with finding happiness and caring for my plants these days because it's just been a struggle. Pretty much every plant I look at has spider mites. So um, I've been trying to figure out a way to reframe my plant relationship, at least temporarily, so that I don't just throw all my plants out because that's kind of the level of frustration I've been at with the spider mites these days. I mean, I obviously don't mean it. I, I would never throw all my plants out. I love them too much, which is why this has been pretty hard for me. And then it occurred to me that I didn't need to be working that hard. I was sitting here thinking, I wish I could just make it rain inside my house. Um, and I realized that I kind of can in my own small way, misting. I don't know why it took me so long to realize that I should just be misting my plants all the time. Um, but I foresee this planty future in this house that is a lot better now that I realize I can go around and just spray my plants lightly with water. And it really, really combats the spider situation. The weather has started to change and the environment is not so spider mighty. Like outside these past few weeks, so, um, 
I have a lot of hope and I feel good about my collection and we're, we're getting back into being in a happy place with my plants um, because I was just feeling very overwhelmed and honestly pretty sad about the spider mite thing. So now I've got my new best friend, this mister, well, I've had this mister for a long time, but a new thing in my routine, which is just going around and misting all my plants. And it reminds me honestly of my earliest plant days because I used to mist a lot um, because it just felt like a way to be connected with my plants and to be obsessing over them and caring for them all the time. I feel really happy to have this routine again where I go around and I like drink coffee and I like spray my plants down. It feels very productive, um, especially that I'm combating the mites now. I feel very excited about my plants again. So if you don't mist your plants and you have spider mites, I'd suggest maybe just start lightly misting them. It's hard to keep up with the level of washing. I don't mean to replace washing plants with misting them, like you should still, take them to the sink or into your shower if you have spider mites on them and, and give them a rinse down whenever you can. But adding in misting on a daily basis, I think is like a level of care that is possible for me and is actually seeming to really help. So I wanted to share that with you because I feel very hopeful. Yay, love my mister. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. This has been really fun. I am so glad that I have this new misting solution. I feel like this is my new favorite thing or like best friends me and this mister this <laughs> this is my new holy grail plant care object where I go around and just miss my plants and it's awesome it is definitely bringing me planty joy so yeah thank you so much for watching this video I hope that your plants are bringing you joy and not too many past problems and I hope that you're having a really good start to the fall I just had my first pumpkin spice latte which <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't really taste the pumpkin spice. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I hope to catch you in the next one. <gasps> Bye. So do you see all this stuff over here? This is a microphone system. Um, I have been struggling, you guys, to try to figure out how to get mic'd up. I've been struggling because I'm not an AV wizard, which apparently you need to be in order to figure out how to use a microphone with an old iPhone and a very old camera, which are the things that I have. So anyway,